Hi there guys, welcome back to DanielRosal.tech on YouTube, Medium and at the website DanielRosal.tech or at my personal website DanielRosal.co.il So I have just uh, been QAing the script, testing it, I'm almost there. There's always an awkward process uh, of QAing stuff. Um, I specifically the I didn't have the bash operator at the start of in my Synology and that was creating problems. But basically what this is, in the last video I went through it in depth and I'm just going to do this more quick, a uh, quicker explanation just to show exactly what this does. This is a bash, uh, just a simple bash script I've written up in order to back up uh, oh, using the rsync command line interface, my shared hosting. Now shared hosting is a uh, tricky, tricky one for backups. If you have a shared hosting, shared hosting is the entry level sort of hosting for anyone that isn't familiar. Stuff like GoDaddy. Now GoDaddy offers VPS and almost every shared host does offer VPS nowadays. But it's the entry level cheapest form of web hosting that most people that just have one relatively low traffic website will purchase shared hosting um, and then move upwards. Uh, it's because you know there's a lot of great backup solutions for for instance AWS but not everybody that isn't a professional developer is going to be it would be grossly overkill to run uh, a little portfolio website or a little blog on AWS you know unless it was super high traffic and unless you just loved AWS and had those had those skills and I, I use AWS but I can't see a reason at the moment to uh, to migrate my infrastructure there so for shared hosting and reseller hosting which also works on usually a cPanel basis reseller just has a thing called WHM which is like the uh, mother cPanel and uh, and you give your typically your, your reseller clients access to the children cPanel but this is a means it's a script I've made for backing up now the problem with um, the problem with rsync is that when you're in shared hosting you have access to typically from the root of the server home forward slash foo Foo, of course, stands for your username and cPanel. So you're basically caged. You can go anywhere above this, but you can't go anywhere below this in the server. Include and what you have below you in the server is a directory called var mysql, and that's in shared hosting where the mysql. Now you don't want to back up mysql databases just by capturing the raw databases. You want to use the actual export format. Um, but for this reason, it is uh, it's you can't simply back up like you would in a VPS by going from the root of the server and then being smart about what you grab. So uh, what I have the system I have devised in the last week to back this stuff onto my Synology NAS is now this is basically modified version for the benefit of someone using it. So when I was QAing this, I wanted as much verbosity as possible. So I used, you can see, you can daisy chain three Vs for verbosity. So rsync minus A is archive, A is archive, R is recursive, Z, and I'm looking, I'm cheating, I have the rsync man page in my other screen here. Minus Z can also be used by typing uh, minus, minus compress. I call these minuses, some people call them tax. I'm watching a Linux Academy course where the guy calls them tax, I don't know why that is. But anyway, I call these minus. So minus Z or minus minus compress. Um, now this minus E and then in single quotation marks SSH minus P port number, that's if you're using a weird SSH port. Um, the standard SSH port is 22, of course. But nowadays a lot of hosts, well I don't know actually if a lot of hosts, but some shared hosts, if they give you SSH access to your hosting, they insist that you use a weird non-standard port such as 12345. Typically it's not, it's not one one two three four five. I've just changed this a little bit here. Um, so that's what that is. So if you're if you're not using port twenty two, this is how you you uh, connect via a non-standard SSH port. Tac tac delete slash minus minus delete is deletions at source. So when I'm creating these backups, I want to be capturing what I delete. So if I'm in the shared hosting and I have, um, you know. If I can just zoom in a bit over here, if I have home, uh, me, public HTML, WP content, and this is a WordPress, for instance, uploads, etc., etc., and I delete one.pdf, I want that to delete 
on the target, the targets where I'm backing up to my computer or my NAS. So that's what minus minus delete does. Um, it captures deletions. Progress is another thing to show you. I just went uh, whole hog on adding everything that could possibly show me more info about what was going on because you do you do sometimes get this rsync can hang hang on it'll say rsync um something like rsync waiting waiting on incremental file list and if you get a message like this rsync is checking the source to see what's changed since it last ran and if it's a big file system that can take a while um, so I was, when I was QAing this, I just wanted to know exactly what was going on. And when I added these three, two extra, most people add one verbosity. You can add three. I don't know if you can add four. I think I read three was the limit. But when I added three, it was really showing me exactly what was happening. We're checking everything on the source and uh, what's new is being moved. Then you have your username. This is your cPanel user. Okay, not your necessarily the username you used to log in. Um, and then the IP address of your server, then a colon, and then it's the relative path, sorry, the absolute path from the root from the root of the server, very important, not just from the bit you can see, which uh, it might look different in File Manager. And then you have, and this is also important, this is also where I went wrong in my initial test, you want that trailing slash. If you do not have the trailing slash, public HTML trailing slash in your backup directory, you will, let's say I wanted to back up here, so I want to have it like this. I want to have a trailing slash. That means everything here is going to go here. If I have it like public, you know, rsync, um, operators, public, home, cPanel, user, public, HTML. If I have it like this, what I will end up with is public HTML building itself a folder. Um, on the target and I don't want that. I wanted everything specifically. I actually have it like this. Um, my site, boom. Um, so I didn't want my site, public HTML, boom. So you can you just kind of learn these things as you play around with the command line interface and the scripts. So that's another thing just to bring to your attention. Um, and that is essentially it. Now for the MySQL, I have a cron job running on the server which um, I created this folder. And it just another another thing to point out is, as I said in the last video, do not put this, do not put this in public HTML because then it will be exposed to the internet. Anything in public HTML or above in a shared hosting environment is exposed to the internet. So I created this folder called backup and I created a cron job, which was running, I'm just gonna zoom in again, it was running my SQL dump um, I forgot the parameters and it just uh, said, I told it which database, my WP, WPDB.SQL and I said please put it in home, my cPanel user, backup. And again, training slash. So then this creates a um, database here, my WP <coughs> backup.SQL and if you don't know what your, um, if you forget what your WordPress, um, I'm just assuming you're backing up WordPress. If you forget what your WordPress MySQL database is called, you can check in WP config and you will get there the MySQL DB, the MySQL user and the MySQL password. So all your credentials will be visible in plain text in WP config. So make sure you have the right permissions there. Do not whatever you do, do not whatever you do something like this. Um, so that is that. So I run that as a cron job on the server and that spits out the MySQL database here. And then in another line on that, which I've uh, written MySQL uh, backup, I then move the database and on my, this is, and this is the Synology. So you can see um, in Synology, you go like this. The actual path is a forward slash volume one forward slash the shared volume name forward slash, and I created all these directories myself manually, forward slash my site one, forward slash db, forward slash my site one. So the files go in this guy, this this level, the MySQL goes in this guy, website two, and you can have website three, website four, etc. Repeat the process. 
So this is my Synology, I've just logged in over here and uh, you can see that I have uh, a couple of test scripts for testing purposes and um, then I just need to run this guy and let's just see what happens. This is basically the same script with uh, details replaced. And that's it. So basically that's what you need to do in order to get it to run. Final step in the process for me was putting this onto a volume in the Synology NES. I created a volume just called Scripts with capital S. Put in my bash script that I edited on my computer. Just did a drag and drop thing in File Station, and um, then I basically set it running with bash prefix to it. Put that on a schedule, and uh, so far it's good. I um, don't take this one. Send run details only when the script terminates because I wanted to just make sure that it was running so I left that unticked and every time this runs at midnight I get a little email notification saying that the script has run and all the changes I've made during that day in my in the couple of websites I'm backing up um, are pulled down, the new MySQL databases are pulled down and they overwrite the existing ones and unless I am mistaken, mistaken something I'm getting some sort of a daily incremental backup copy of my website and I do still take the full backups because I trust those more. I, that's using the cPanel native interface and I export those. But just to always have a very fresh copy and I'm going to build out a weekly folder as well just to sync those two as I described earlier. Just that I've one that lags a little bit further back in time. But this basically reassures me that if I do something like make a new WordPress post or add a new PDF to my site for backup purposes that that's all going to be captured pretty quickly. Um, I don't think I think a day is fine. I wouldn't want to be running this more often than that and putting putting uh, pressure on my web hosting resources. But of course, you can do whatever you whatever you like according to the type of infrastructure you have in the cloud. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if anyone ever wants to get in touch, my website is at danielrosel.co.il. Have a great day.